Knowing how to execute certain pieces of code at specific times in your application is an important skill to have. Now with Vue, we have two options. We have lifecycle hooks in the core Vue.js framework, and we have navigation guards available in Vue Router. By the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of Vue Router navigation guards, and so you'll be able to use them effectively in your project. Now we have three main types of navigation guards available to us. We have global navigation guards that are executed on every route change. We have per route guards that are executed only on specific routes. And we have in component guards that are executed only for specific components. Let's start by taking a look at the global navigation guards in the code pen that I've provided. Be sure to fork it and play along with it because that's the best way to learn. Now looking at our demo here, you'll see at the top, I just have a simple navigation and each link takes us to a different route wired up in our router. You can expand this a little bit. You look over into the HTML section and you'll see router link components and these are what we're using to create the links that are down here in the UI. Each link is wired up to a name and the name corresponds to the named route that I have set up over on the JavaScript panel. So you go over to the JavaScript panel near the, almost near the bottom we have our routes constant right there and each route that is being created has a name assigned to it. So we have home, bar, foo, error and then we have another route for user. Now the user route takes in a parameter for the user ID. Now this means that this component being used for this route will be reused every time we visit a new user. So the parameter for the user ID will be changing, but Vue will reuse the user component to render that user profile or whatever the case may be. This is important to know because Navigation Guards helps us with refreshing this. Now scrolling down just a little bit, you'll see we have our global guards there. We have our before each, our before resolve, and after each. And again, each of these is called after every route change. Now each one takes a callback function. Let's look at before each first. We have to and from. The to parameter has the details for the route that we're going to. The from parameter, of course, has the details for the route that we're coming from. Now the next parameter is really important. After you've done what you want to do within the callback function, you need to call next in one way or other to either finish resolving the route or to cut it short or to redirect. There's quite a few things you can do here. While we're on that, let's jump back to the documentation and we'll find the right around, uh, let's see, just after global guards, we have our next function. And here you'll see an explanation of the different things that we can pass into next. Now we can call just next without any sort of argument and then that will just proceed down the chain towards our ultimate resolution of the route which will then render our component or we can pass in false which will abort the navigation. Then you can also pass in a route. So when you use uh, uh, quotation marks here or you can pass in an object with path defined that will be a redirect. So let's say you're trying to resolve a route you want to verify that someone has permissions to view that next page, so based on a profile ID or um, maybe a role that you have defined for that particular user. If they don't have the permissions to travel to that route, then you can redirect them to a login page or a warning page that tells them what the problem is. There's a lot of different things you can do there. Finally, you can also pass in an error object. And when an error object is passed in, well then, that's it. And then you can catch that error on the router on error function and I'll show you that in a moment too. So going back here, let's see, I have a console message to log out for each uh, router guard that's called. So let's uncomment that and this one and this one right here, make sure I've got those uncommented. So now when we travel to each route, you'll see them firing and you can clearly see the order in which they're called. Let's open that up. If you don't have the console visible, you just click the little button down here and that'll open it up. So let's clear it and let's travel around a little bit. So we'll go to user one. We can see that the before each was called, the before resolve and an after each. I have another one logging out, but that's somewhere else. Uh, and each time we travel to a new route, then we have those three called always in that exact same order. 
Now, what if we pass in an error? Well, let's see. Within any one of these, you can have some, some checks, like I said. And we'll go up to our before each. I just have some basic checks here where we can do different things. So if we go to foo, foo should redirect to the home screen. So I'll go to foo. Uh, let's go to the, the component up above, first of all. Uh, let's see, foo. You will not see this template when foo is redirected home. Well, let's let's try that. Let's make sure that this shows this is the home screen. I'll clear that. We'll go to foo. Before each was fired and we were just redirected to the home screen. So this didn't change. We didn't actually see that template. It's exactly what we wanted. So that's good. Let's go down here again. What else can we do? Okay, so that's a redirect on foo. What if we wanted to uh, call an error? So let's see if we have an error. So I just set up a, a basic route that will go to an, an error page. Uh, but instead of forwarding, uh, instead of resolving that by calling next, I'm passing in an error object. See that? That's all I'm doing. I'm passing in an error object. And View Router is sm smart enough to know that because that's an error, it will shoot it down here. Router dot on error, which is what we saw right here. So I created that. I have my callback to catch that error. And this is what will be called not the error template. The error template is above. And you'll see right here, you will not see this template. The error is passed to our error handler, which is the one down here. So we should see handling this error down here and not that template. So let's go to error. And there we go. So before each fired, we created an error. We passed it through the next function. And now we have our handler down here at the bottom, exactly what we wanted. Now I have another one here for that we can check a specific path for, let's say, user ID one. We can pass in false, and that will just that will just cut everything out right there. It won't go any further. So we just open that up. We'll go to user one. The before each was fired, but you see we don't have our user one details there. So we'll go to user two. Oh, we got that. No problem. Let's go back to one. Nope. It just stays right where we are. No navigation is completed. No redirect. No error. We just stay put. So that's helpful as well. The next type of guard we can look at is a per route guard. Now we only have one of these and uh, it's fairly simple to use. We'll go over to our routes definition again and you'll see it's defined right here for our user component. Now every time a user component is called, it will be for user one, user two, or user three. This before enter will be called. So let's open our console a bit more again. We'll go to user, oh, go to user one. And oh, remember I, I put a stop to that one. So let's comment that out so we can actually see all of our users. There we go. Clear that up. Go to user one, entering user here. You know what? I'll comment out these as well. Have a little less noise on the screen. Comment out that and final one console.log. There we go. Okay, third time is a charm. Entering user. Oh, we don't see the third time. So let's put something on there so we can be clear which user. Okay, so since we're entering two, let's, uh, let's use the two and parameters. We should be able to find our user ID there. And so two, the, the params are available on to and from, and you see our params are right here in the HTML. We're passing in the param called user ID. That's where I'm getting this right here. And that's also wired up in the route definition. Oh, and I just, it's right above me, right there. So these three have to match. Our params has to have a user ID property. We have to have it right here with the colon in front of it. And then we have to have, uh, then we can grab it right here. So let's see where we're entering. Entering user one. There's our one, entering user two. Ah, you know why that's not changing? This is a perfect segue into our next type of route, which is specific to a component, and it is called the before route update. What you just saw here is precisely why we have this hook. 
the user route, or say, sorry, the user component is being reused. And just because the little user ID is changing, the, the, the query parameter, doesn't mean that the whole uh, component is going to be refreshed. In fact, it won't be. So this is not being called a second time. We're not, we've already entered the route. It's not being called again. That's why we need this navigation guard. So let's try this one. I'm going to copy the same log statement and I'll put it up here. And just to show you that we're reusing this component, let's try this again. We'll clear, go to user one, entering user one, user two. Now we're reusing this component and there's our new message. Three, there we go again. This is very useful because it's not uncommon to have, say, um, a customer list or a user list and then have a profile showing up right next to it. And we want to reuse that component. It's more efficient. So every time we click on a new user or customer in our list, we want that to update. And we need a way to do that. Before we had this, we had to watch the route property on the, uh, the component object. And that was, uh, we had to set up a watcher for that. And that was a little tedious. This is a lot nicer, uh, at least in my opinion. So you can use it for that. So I'm glad that happened. I'm glad I forgot that. It was a good, uh, good way to move into that next lesson. So use the before route update. This is a per component or an in component navigation guard. Use that when you want to do this sort of an update. Now, I've got some mock user data up at the top. You see const user list. I'm going to pretend that every time we refresh this route, we're fetching more user data, okay? So let's pretend we're doing that. What we're doing here, we're just going to fire a, a get user method, which will pass in an ID, which is a property on my object up here. And we'll return that user's info and we'll set it for this user equals. We'll set it on the user, um, the user, uh, property there on our component object. So when we reuse this component, we'll be sure to update the user information. So I'll just uncomment that, get rid of my log statements, so clean up the console a little bit. Every time we reuse this, we'll be sure to reset the user right here. Now what about the first time we enter the component? Well, the first time we enter, before route update won't fire, so we have to set this on a lifecycle hook, mounted. So I have mounted wired up, we're setting our user when we first load the component. Mounted will not be called again when we're reusing the component. So from that point, we use our navigation guard to reset the user information. Now the user information is being used right up here in the template. And I'll just open this a bit. It'll be right down here where we have the home screen, uh, the home screen information. So let's uh, try that out. We'll go to user one. We have Peter Parker and Spider-Man. We go to two. It changes Bruce Banner and Hulk. And three, we have Tony Stark and Iron Man now. The number here in the parentheses, that's the user ID. Now I want to show you if we only use the mounted hook, I want to show you how the ID changes, but the user information won't change because we're not resetting the user because we're not calling mounted again and again. So I'll comment this out in our before route update. Clear this, user one. We have Peter Parker and Spider-Man, number one, but watch. The ID will change, but the names won't. There, ID two. These names stay the same because we're not resetting our user object. And three, same thing. So this is a common scenario, and this hook is very, very useful for managing this. So just pretend our get user is an async function. What you would want to do is wire up next to, uh, to respond once the promise is resolved, for example. And that'll work just fine. Now let's take a look at some other in-component navigation guards we have. Not only do we have before route leave, or sorry, before uh, route update, we have before route leave and before route enter. Pretty easy to understand when those get fired. So how do you use them? Before route enter and leave all receive a to from and a next parameter. So for each one, you have to make sure you're calling next. Of course, here on next, you can also redirect, you can pass in errors, or you can abort by passing in false. So a lot of things you can do. If you uh, abort, let's say I passed in false right here, that would abort the leaving of this route. So if I'm trying to go from user one to user two, 
I will abort that navigation and I will never reach the user 2. I'll just remain on user 1. So that's helpful. Uh, let's see, if we do on before route enter, we could do the same thing. Uh, before route enter though, we can also fire uh, some functions. So let's say we're traveling from user 1 or any of the users for that matter to bar or foo to another route and before we fully get there we want to execute a function well we have in next we can pass in another function that will receive the instance of the component that we're traveling to so this is very helpful because we can access it I just use VM to hold on to this to hold on to the new component object and I can access test function which is a method right here on this component so I have my component bar you scroll down a little bit under methods you'll see our test function and test function simply logs out a sentence to the console and I have two different statements here I have the one this message is called from the guard and this message is called from the component so of course it's a method on the component I can call it anytime that component is mounted I can call it from a button or whatever but I can also call it from my callback function here that I'm passing into next. So just to show you when it's called from here I'm passing in true and if I'm passing in true it's coming from the guard and I'll fire that message. Otherwise it'll default to false from guard will be false and I'll call this message instead. So let's go to bar that's our route that we're going to. We'll go to bar and we'll take a look at the console and we'll see that this message was called from the guard. That means that test func was called from my callback that I passed into next. Now if I click on this text right here which is in my my template, I've wired it up with a click handler to fire test func. Now if I click this, I'll get a different message because I'm not calling it from the navigation guard, I'm calling it from a click handler directly from the component. You can see we have a different message here. And that's all there is to it. We went over Let's see, one, two, three in component navigation guards. We went through a per route guard, which is down here. Open this a bit. Wired up to our, uh, let's see, there we go. Wired up to our user component. And then we went, we looked at our global guards that are connected right to the router. These are pretty useful, so spend some time practicing with them. Uh, try to get your head around it. If you have any questions or you need help with anything, then be sure to leave a comment down below the video. You can reach out to me on Twitter. You can also take another look at the documentation. You never know, the answer might be pretty obvious there. It always pays to go through the documentation, play around on something like CodePen to make sure that you really understand what's being said. This is a complicated subject and it's not easy to learn. You just have to practice. Thanks very much for watching the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I have many more tutorials just like this one in the works. Till next time.